All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, according to the NDIC, 98% um, of Nigerians don't have up to 500,000 Naira. That's a $1,250 in their accounts. Now, according to McKenzie and Co., only 2 million people in Nigeria have purchasing power and uh, annual incomes over $10,000. Now, Shakiru Adebayo, in an article titled Crazy Rich Nigerians, stated that in 2018, Nigeria was crowned as the poverty capital of the world. The same year that uh, it made headlines as the country with the highest number of black billionaires in the world. So why would a country with the largest economy in Africa have such a staggering number of the have-nots? Yes, the politicians, in bracket, who sometimes, but not all the time, double as the CRNs, right, the crazily rich Nigerians, siphon our resources, but that, that is not the whole story, right? The five richest Nigerians who combined wealth, or uh, whose combined wealth is more than the GDP of many countries, are not politicians. To be wealthy is in and of itself not a sin, but the morality of wealth is dependent on its source as well as the attitude of its owner. So with everything that's happening in the country, um, the, the disregard of the wealthy in showcasing their wealth, um, especially on social media and the growing frustration amongst middle class and low class Nigerians, we are asking, is Nigeria truly designed for the rich? Now, please, let us share what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to read one. A0384663. You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Okay, so let me put out a disclaimer. <laughs> oh, my ladies, they keep wondering, where do you get all these weird, weird topics from? But I think when I saw that post, right, right, it actually, it actually got me thinking. And I like conversations that get me thinking, right? Um, is, it, is it common to Nigeria that for every time you walk into a room, you're sized, and it is based on how you're sized, that is how you are Adjust. probably attended to, right? Um, this get money at all cost thing that we see today, go on social media, mm -hmm. go on any platform now, it is everything must make sure that it hits to the point that I am making money. You see people buy cars, you know, they go on social media, they didn't buy the car, but they go on social media and tell you that, oh, my hard work has paid off. Yeah. Because they, they understand the language, they understand that the, 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 the power you know, that such things do, it attracts more. So this fake it, do you, make, do you make it, all of those things all ties up into the question, no? Mm -hmm. That says, you know, is Nigeria really meant for the rich? Because everything we do right now, everything you must make sure that the end goal is that you are rich you are you have the um, buying power you have money but i i i want to ask this question first of all is it really a true summation or the true picture of what we are or who we are right now in nigeria that you know it has to be about money um so yes it basically has to be because most of the things that you have to do to survive, basically everybody's on survival mode, including the rich and the average and then the poor. So let's forget the rich right now. Let's talk about the average and the poor. They have to eat. They have to um, pay their rent. They have to take care of their children. They have to probably take care of themselves as well. Mm. And if they don't have the resources to do any of these things, it's going to be a problem. Mm. Because right now, the cost of living has gone up. The cost of food in the market has gone up. I mean, I think it was last week or two weeks ago that there was a conversation of um, 20,000 naira cannot cook. I busy 100,000 naira cannot mm. cook a pot of... No, 10,000 naira cannot cook a pot of stew mm -hmm. anymore mm -hmm. for an average person. Uh -uh. So, I mean, yes. yes, that was a conversation um, a couple understand. of weeks ago. Yes, yes things are know. expensive. How many people are you feeding? Okay, it depends on how many Yes, ma'am, we're actually referring to a family now, like an average family of, let's of say, four. two or four. That on a good day, that 10,000 naira stew would be enough for like a couple of days. But right now, it's Even different. So I'm saying that 
you don't i mean I, i'm not saying they should go to crime but the reason why they are doing this thing is because the cost of living has increased do you understand so i mean i feel like we just the children a couple of weeks ago as well that were caught um trying to do ritual mm. with is it their mother be who that they said they caught them trying to do the whole mm. thing what, or is it the boy or, or is it the boy yeah, the that, that, that boy. no the one that killed his girlfriend yeah that I was having um, um, sex with the girl yes, with, the, with the corpse for six days or something until he was caught so it's just like get rich or, dry, or die trying i mean with the issue that happened with hush puppy everybody back then were looking at it looking up to him with a luxurious life and all of that and then eventually when the fbi caught him that oh yeah he has been a fraudulent person has stolen a couple of this thing is out there in the news but people are still trying their best to make money with through any means scamming ritual um killing and the likes i mean it's just crazy how this is the reality that we see right now and i don't know how this is going to change and i don't know how long it will take but truthfully the idea that Nigeria is for the rich is no joke. It actually is something that happens. Okay, so I like the conversation and where you're taking it to. So can I break it down sure. a lot further? You know how you travel outside of the country, you come out fresh off college, you're able to start to work, and you're able to get mortgage, right? So you are not thinking... That's if you have a good credit. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. But let me say that... You're, well, let me just... Let's leave fresh graduates. You got a job. You are able to immediately start to think, I can actually plan my salary around a monthly mortgage towards owning that home. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria, the case is not like that. You understand? You are not even able to make, to make a lot of money that can... You know, and you're thinking, as you're thinking now as a young person, the first thing you're thinking is how to pay your rent. Thankfully, Fashola reduced it to... To one year. one year, you know, it was two years yeah. before three landlords years, will yeah. ask you. Some mm -hmm. people would even ask you for three, three or four. Yeah. You know, that was a huge capital. You had not even earned that money, mm -hmm. but you needed to pay that money. Okay. Yeah. Then you want to get a car. You can't afford a car because first of all, maybe you do not even have the job that can give you maybe uh, a, a bank loan. So you have to buy a Tokumbo car. Worst case scenario, you are thinking within the range of a middle. Then, not now, because now if you want to buy the same Tokumbo mm -hmm. car. You, you are spending see. a lot more. See. So everything is tied to cash in Nigeria. Right? You can't go in and say, you know what, I can I can keep a little bit of my money, pay it instrumentally. Abroad, when you go outside of you, I mean if you go to pay for something and you are paying cash, they are you looking like you like really? a mad person. Where did you come exactly. from? Exactly. Because they are not used to that culture of yeah. spending, you know, cash. So when I see that summation that is Nigeria designed for the rich. I would agree that yes because everything we do is cash based yeah. we do not even do things around so now the, you know it is so difficult you want to buy a house you are buying it bam you are not paying small small you want to buy this you're buying but you want to buy this so how can the average person cope hmm. you understand hmm. well let me hear your thoughts hmm. well um, so the uh, conversation is coming out now it's well, yeah it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's there you know but uh, I'd just like to say that, I mean, it, what caught my attention while you were speaking is the fact that um, the, the cash full society that we found ourselves, other systems, other climes, other countries have gradually thought of ways to make life easier for their people, citizens. So you have maybe in the US where you have cashless society, you have credit, and if you have good credit, you will do everything to make sure that your credit is mm -hmm. good so that you can okay, be open to mortgage and loans and all of that, which makes life easy. You can plan yourself, right? You can say, okay, in so-so amount of time, I can be able to make up the money or you are able to put structure to yourself. Yeah. So we bring I like it that back. Word, structure. You're mm -hmm. able to put structure to yourself. You now bring it back to the Nigerian setting. And because gradually we have gravitated towards um now i don't even and this is me being controversial here i don't even think we have true rich nigerians and if we have there are very few of them because majority of the people that we see who have seemingly made money have made it through devious means and these are the people that nigerians see as the so-called rich people 
that they're emulating. Mm -hmm. A hush puppy, for example, I look at him, I look at his lifestyle, and I want to be like hush puppy all of a sudden because that is the image that I have of the rich. Without, and then before I know it, I want to do the thing. So if it's Yahoo that's what's reigning, that's what I'm going to gravitate towards. Mm. If it's ritual killing, there was a time that was really bad. So everybody who wanted to make money had to be in so, uh, some circles or some cacos or whatever, because that was how you made it. You have to be part of us. You have to do the things that we do to be able to make the money. And these are the people that you see. There was a time where graduates in Nigeria mm could afford to buy cars mm -hmm. as a graduate yeah. because of what you are paid you mm -hmm. have i mean the uh, even the 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 naira value mm -hmm. at the time could afford you to plan to buy a pot and then then we had our uh, pojo in nigeria so we were manufacturing cars here mm -hmm. so it was easy for you to be able to plan to have a car yeah. as a graduate but unfortunately we have eradicated that again. All of the systems that would have created that opportunity for Nigerians to truly make money have gradually been eroded in our system. Mm. Now we have more people who are stealing money. Now we have more, and that's why a lot of things are cash based because they've stolen it. They don't know how to or where to put it. They can't put they it. They just go buy a house now. The next thing they buy, not just a house, they buy an estate. What happens to real estate? You understand a house that has the if you check it real in real time that house value has not appreciated up until that point but you see somebody that has co that that comes has so much money that you they know god knows where in. he got they the money from. There. buys the property the, the, the realtor will say okay uh -uh. it means that we can increase the prices yeah. but they are false you know false um what's it called Re false numbers false so, numbers yeah. because we the, the houses if you look at evaluation, evaluation yeah. thank you elsie because if you look at those numbers those houses if you check it the price shouldn't go as high as what some of them are selling mm. for but because people just have um loose cash that we do not even know the source where it came from you know every other person now suffers for it so you talked about structure now come to elsie because when you talk about structure it's as simple as even for instance, if I go to London, I'm not thinking I need to get a car. Because from the airport, I can the take train. a train to you have anywhere your oyster I'm going card. to. You have the Oyster card, everything. But you see, here in Nigeria, I remember when my sister was coming to Lagos to serve. I had to tell her, you understand? Then she was still dating her husband. I said, see, this is your husband. He can afford you to, uh, afford to buy you a brand new car. Please, go and, buy, and don't buy Tokumbo. Because I don't want the one that you will break down Todd Melan Bridge. I will start looking for who who go and rescue you. Mm. You know, it is that bad. Because you have to not think through all the expenses that you shouldn't have been thinking of. Because if the trains were working, if the public system were, was good, nobody would be thinking of investing so much mm. in cars. Do you mm. understand? So it is a, it's all intertwined to just make sure that. Problem. Whether you like it or not. And that's why you see a lot of young people, no matter what, they'll tell you, you just that, want to get I just want to get rich. I get rich or I die trying. That's mm. what is happening now. And it's, a, it's, it's impacting heavily, you know, on, we're talking about more decadence. We're talking about everything is being impacted. But let me hear your thoughts, Elsie, on the question. Then we'll take a break and open our phone lines. Mm -hmm. This thought is uh, somehow. But <laughs> I like I like the things that Noah has said in terms of structure, and also the part where you came from, where you were talking about things that are attainable, credit facilities, and all that. And I'll just say, I mean, I live in Nigeria, I grew up in Nigeria, so Nigeria is a peculiar case, um, and it's just interesting to see how. It's interesting and sad at the same time. Time how the decadence, like you said, ha just keeps. Um, going hard yeah. and hard and hard and which is why we keep talking about having good leaders so that hopefully hopefully we can begin to get things right because it's just difficult right to survive as a nigerian especially when the things that you're supposed to have readily available to you as a citizen of the country mm -hmm. is not made available for you um i also want to i mean i want to talk about two things that's um poverty and then financial literacy mm um i want to categorically say that poverty is a global thing mm -hmm. with all these indices we see oh nigeria is the whatever capital of poverty in the world i know we have it bad but um there are still some politics that goes into some of these indices we see that unfortunately because our 
leaders don't also care about the PR and positioning of a country, just the way you also need to position a business mm -hmm. to attract the kind of investors and the kind of um, people that you want in that business is the way a country is run as well. Absolutely. But unfortunately, we have people that are not thinking in that direction. The image of Nigeria is nothing to write home about. So you're sitting in the comfort of your home, you're watching a CNN, for example, and you're seeing an advert about Ghana. You're seeing an advert about Dubai. I mean, I didn't want to use Dubai, so let's just leave it at Ghana because you would say, oh, Dubai is what? They are rich, right? Mm. Whatever. But we're talking of Ghana right now. You're seeing an image that tells you, oh, I need to visit this country. We do not have anybody doing that. So that's to tell you how the people that are leading us are even thinking. So mm. if there is anything... And they go to those places. If there's anything that is going to be like a bad indices, it's just going to be easy for anybody to put you there because we're not just interested, mm. right? So I'm saying, again... I was watching a conversation, I think I shared that with you yesterday, a conversation between Oprah and Viola Davis. Mm -hmm. She wrote a book um, called Finding Me. I think it came out today, but they did like a, a sit down to just mm. talk about it. And she was sharing her story. And that story, That's I think, was powerful. Not because, I mean, I'm not the kind of person that would just draw onto grass to gray story because there is that notion that Nigerians just love grass to gray story. Mm. But it just sort of opened my mind to... Um, what it is like poverty when she was describing the poverty that she grew up in even oprah said i know i grew up poor but, but this it's one, not <laughs> this your own it's on another level mm -hmm. and she she didn't grow up from nigeria mm. she grew up from she grew up, she grew up in america, america right mm -hmm. and she was telling you how she was she grew up in a place where um was it rats, her rats were eating mm -hmm. the, their skin jumping mm -hmm. on their body and that is america that is not nigeria right mm -hmm. but you are never going to see that part of america in the media oh, right no. except for people like this now that are coming up to speak mm. so that's for you to just understand that yes a lot is happening it seems All like they have the things as yeah. well that yes credit facilities but there are people who are going through it and when i say growing going through it they are going through it mm. and which is why people like oprah and viola now are saying you know what we cannot stop helping people mm. because if those places are perfect as well right they wouldn't have to really be raising a finger to help anybody they'll just mm. tell their story and like oh the world is now perfect or our country is now perfect mm. and move on mm. but then again moving on to financial literacy came to my mind when you Quickly. were talking mm. about credit facilities and all and it's just to tell you that when we talk about financial literacy i think on monday was um, national financial literacy day or something mm. you understand that for nigeria it is a national issue it's not a personal issue mm. we do not have like you said mortgage we, we do don't have, have the culture anything. for yeah we don't so you cannot see that also playing out in our systems mm. because like you said there was a time um graduates who come out of school mm. and okay. they already have a job waiting for them mm -hmm. and that job is enough to sustain mm -hmm. them now we are living in an economy whereby it, everything just keeps going down even what's your minimum wage so even if there is a system now based on what you talked about in terms of real estate and how it's been evaluated mm. and there is a system that says oh okay if you're working you can pay x amount of money every month and end your have a home or live in a home please how much are you going to begin to pay inside eighteen thousand? <laughs> okay let's take a break before you say you note. own a home that means you pay it till you die <laughs> you cannot even you pay know, so financial literacy less, and financial a problem issue. is a national it's a big issue. issue let's take a break because we want to open our phone lines mm -hmm. i hear the phones are already buzzing they've been buzzing for a while stay with us we'll be right back All right, if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we're asking this question Is Nigeria truly designed for the rich? That's the question. It's, it's something that you really need to sit down and think, you know, about. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. Our phone line is now open. Please remember the rules turn off the volume of your television set. So we can hear ourselves. The number to call is 70 That's the number to call. So, you know, this thing you talked about, you know, minimum wage and all of that. I remember that, you know, I'm setting up an apartment and the young man came. I think he was his father or his brother or something. Mm -hmm. He did not say, ah, it's his first time. See, it's Asu Strike that is causing it to. You know, so my mom kept on advising him, ah, learn the skill well, because even if you graduate, you're not even sure of a job, <laughs> you know. But I think we have a caller. Um, thank you for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. Yeah, I'm Samuel Komota. Who? Oh, Samuel Komota. Thank you for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. 
Yeah, I a big one for what? I want to beat you beautiful ladies. You you are doing great. In fact, I love this program. I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, thank you. Nigeria. In fact, let me even go local. We did crave for this country. We did crave madness they worry for. This is the only country that somebody who graduate, he has no hope for tomorrow. Hmm. He just they go. Even if the threat. Oh, we lost you. Oh, so sorry, sir. We try yeah. to come. Oh, okay. In certificate. I think it's too loud. The rule of how can we progress mm. as people? We are mad in this country. Uh, no mm. plan, no social plan, nothing. Mm. No us to calm down somewhere. That's why we're that's why we're having a conversation. <laughs> if we are you, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Point me one good hospital. Point me one good area. Point me one state for teach. Hmm. Thank, you. Thank you, Samuel. So, so I, you could see the frustration from yeah. his voice. I'm telling you, you go to the hospital. So a friend of mine relocated to the UK and they have a child with special needs. Omo, when she, when she was telling me how much they spent on that child, hmm. if they were going to pay off pocket, mm. it was, <laughs> it was horrendous. Death of course. Mm. You'll pay for the rest of your life. Of mm. course. Same thing with my sister that lives abroad. I mean, she when she tells me the kinds of bills hospital wise so you cannot not start to think and that's why you see this conversation i want people to start thinking when we are thinking of 2020 exactly mm. do you understand you can't just come and say i will build the project mm. i did not build no, before we don't I mean, hear that. those are not the kinds of conversations we're having how would you make my life better that's how would i come out tomorrow and say you know what i can boast of xyz because i'm a nigerian what are the benefits of being a Nigerian? It's really insane. Okay, let me take another call. Tony. Hello, you're, the, you're live. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Go ahead, you're live. Uh, I want to thank you for this opportunity. My name is Tony. I'm calling from Abuja. Thank you, Tony. Uh, the issue is that if you are normal in Nigeria, <laughs> you cannot do anything. Nigeria actually is sorry that every Nigeria is supposed to be a millionaire. Hmm. But the fact remains that very few have decided to take these millions to within their own uh, area. Meaning that other Nigerians are left to be like beggars. But what I might say in essence is that the youths, we are always saying the youth, the future belongs to the youth, the future belongs to the youth. Who are the youth? Mm -hmm. Some of them are in this government now that we are all crying power now. So when you now give them the power to become the leader indeed, what do you think this Nigeria will become? Mm -hmm. So many youths who are within 20, 25 mm -hmm. are driving so much expensive cars. Yet, even the villages, in the villages, if you give one thousand to an old man, he will forget his age, almost bending down to thank you. But somebody is spending 150 million, 25 million, 30 million in buying water. I would say Nigeria is poor. Nigeria is not poor. Hmm. We are all rich. It's just that very few people have decided to blindfold others and have taken the way to their side. Thank so you all so we much. need to do is to put our hands together. This is the opportunity again coming to choose the best leader. Not the party, but the individual. But Absolutely. a lot of people vote for parties. Let's look for the individual to vote for. Absolutely. Thank you and so that much. Is my but Thank you so much. If you are normal in Nigeria, you cannot make it. So hmm. I believe that every Nigeria should be abnormal. So thank you. Make it. Thank so, you very much. Thank you so much, Tony. So, I mean, Elsie was talking about salary. Uh, I was going to say that I don't know, I, I don't want to throw shades, but there's a, a, a what's it called, a Nigerian celebrity. That the daughter just bought a car. You know, when I saw that car, I calculated my. <laughs> I, Your salary. I looked at my life. <laughs> I said, Ua, In times how many if years? You are going to calculate based on the current earning. Please, how long will it take for you to buy this type afford of car? To, buy. to be able to afford it 
without i know the way we buy mm. we don't buy we just buy straight up we don't buy cash. we buy cash we pay fully paid you see it's uh, sold so i'm just saying that you know if the environment continues to you know breathe this it is either you get money and all of that tell me on one mouth we are preaching ah let us do let's not do yahoo let's not do runs let's not do because how would you be able to afford these kinds of lifestyle that's the question <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> See, it, sound, is, it, it sounds insane. more like a submission it is insane to be <laughs> sane in an insane society mm -hmm. This is this is absurd. Like I like the fact that we're having this conversation, and we have to keep having this conversation up until, even after the election. And I like what you said just now that every time we have this conversation, we are putting the message in front of everybody to make you remember where the shoe is pinching you. Remember that you are going through all the things you are going through when you have to vote. Yeah, and remember that you're not voting the party, you're voting the individual. The, the way things are happening in Nigeria right now, it will come to a point that people won't be able to afford food to eat. And like he, like he pointed out, if you give an old man 1,000 naira, he would even drop his stick and like be praying for you and be thanking you. This is, this is crazy. And I'm just wondering how best Nigeria is going to turn around. And I don't know how long it will take. Mm. But the more we sit down and we say... Um, uh, we're leaving it to God. Mm -hmm. Abi, the more we are going to be hungry, the more things will keep getting worse. The more things, will, in fact, when I think about these things, eh, I don't know if I have hope. Hmm. I don't even know what else to do, hmm. really, because it's so scary when you think about what will happen to Nigeria in 2023. If we choose the wrong person, <laughs> it's under four years of. Uh, Are you saying four, four years, years or eight years? <laughs> eight so years it's not automatic. Eight it's years. Automatic. It's it's it was yes. 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 One leg of shoe. Is it, is it an injury? <laughs> I cannot keep myself. <laughs> even in even in Lagos State, how many governors have, have actually done mm. just four years? Mm. Mm. Just one. Mm. In how many years? And are you mm. not seeing that even with the new governor? You know, um, the Muslim community came out today. Mm. I think was was it yesterday or today to say that. They cannot be endorsing Songulu that Christian have done their quota. So it's, time, it's for, time for them that they should do. understand the rules. Uh -huh. the so that's about. nice religion. Of course. So it's I mean, so how it do we move past this? Because I I wouldn't want us to leave without okay, let me take another caller quickly because I, I want us to find solutions. Yeah. Thank you for calling. You're live. <laughs> Thank you, Benedict. Yeah, I'm calling for Edo State Oh, nice. Welcome. Okay. Yeah, the, the topic you guys are discussing is quite interesting. But for me, I'll say the problem comes from, came from the moral degrading of the society. Because it starts from home. Just imagine your son brings something you cannot afford. Mm -hmm. The father is not asking, the mother is not asking, they are rather rejoicing. Because first, we, we're talking about those in Abuja or those in authority. No, the authority starts from them. The American, the Britain you talk about, they started their system from home. And that is where it has turned to the society. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you for keeping it short. But so do you want to respond to that I mean, because it's really right so so he, he's right in the in sense, sense. But, le, but let me explain something to you yes this moral decadence you're talking about everything starts from the home well you see before you can start to preach certain things you must make sure that you have provided see if a child right goes to steal um food for instance you wouldn't say it's moral decadence it's yeah. hunger yeah right but if a child goes to steal, like you have everything and you then you steal, that's why people that go to steal iPhone and all that, that beating, you go give an correct beating. You would know that a lot of things stand, but again, what then eventually happens is graduate into it graduates into greed, right? And you now see it escalating. But you see, the society that we are in today, can you go into any place and say, you know what, I want to pick XYZ and I'll pay maybe at the end of the month and all of that? You can't. Everything is dependent on your buying power, mm -hmm. right? So if we start to understand that, if the government puts a structure that even allows for identification, 
As simple as solving the problem of identification. Mm. If I know that I know Elsie, I know where she lives, I know her oblique court, where it was buried and everything. Wow. Of course, I will give her a loan. <laughs> no, you don't get to be. I know I will give her the money because I know that she cannot hide. Mm. So that's why you have a social security number. Anything you do is tied to it. Yeah. Your healthcare, every single thing. Your schooling, every single thing. So if we start to put in those structures, mm. right, that gives room for a balanced and a healthy credit society, that way you can then strike the balance and say, you know what, you can now start to preach morals. You can start to preach, preach other things. Because right now, people don't care anymore. I will do anything just to make sure that I can survive, I can eat, I can, you know. But, but, but talking, uh, yeah, talking uh, solutions, like you have said, yeah. um, I mean, we can complain. We can keep complaining. There's a lot to complain about. I'm if I open you. my own now, nah, this forget the hair and the clothes. You get, <laughs> therefore, but do you understand? Um, but since focusing on the government, I mean, it's a part of the solution because some people who won't talk about um, getting Nigeria to where it's supposed to be will tell you that a lot of it cannot be done without carrying the government along. Yeah. Um, but I also want to say that some of these things you've mentioned now. We have seen some people or some young people coming together with tech to try to find solutions to these things. Mm -hmm. Even the one you mentioned regarding going to some things to be able to buy now and pay later. Mm -hmm. A lot of apps and startups are actually coming yeah, around yeah. to ensure that people can have that. But like you said, they're also battling a lot, which is um, having that data clean. Because even the data that some of us you will think that is the cleanest data in Nigeria now, which is BVN. Mm. I'm sorry to bust your bubble, it's absolutely not clean. Mm. And I'm saying this based on I'm working in that sector mm. and I know what we battle every day in terms of security and ensuring that things are done right. So we don't even have clean data in Nigeria. We don't have synchronized data in Nigeria. And there are people who are working tirelessly to ensure that these things are happening. There's a lot that can be done with technology. Mm. So one of the parts that digital has also played is in a way of democratizing um, wealth. Mm. And you mentioned something about um, the actress whose daughter just um, got, a got a car and people are talking. To be very candid with you, with the number of followers she has on Instagram, she, she can, can actually it, legitimately yeah. afford an, that an without whatever person. people are insinuating, mm. right? Yes. So I'm saying that to say that when it comes to digital and technology, there are young people who are really thinking I'm and money. looking for solutions mm. to actually solve this problem. Mm. But again, you know, when you are in a country like Nigeria yeah. and you're solving that kind of problem, it means that you have massive um, population and you, you are sort of now at that point where you are making a lot of money and it feels like, oh, this person is, it's like a drop in you, the you know, is rich <laughs> and is, is still doing a drop in the ocean in yeah. terms of solutions. So let, let I just want to chip call. that in for solutions. Yeah. Um, I think Peter from Benin, thank you for calling. Yeah, good evening, ladies. Sorry for keeping you. Go ahead, quickly. You can have a full house today. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll keep it short. I think Nigeria is built on injustice. Because Abraham Lincoln once said, true peace is not the absence of conflict, but the presence of justice. Mm. What is the way forward? 100% of Nigeria... The people that have the money and the power will not be even up to 2%. I feel in next election, we have missed it in the context of, is that going to be an APC or a PDP government? For me, what I want to start in my little sphere of influence that I want to start is, after the next election of 2023, I want to see how we young people, workers who can form our own political party, and start imbibing some values that will change this country. It looks so like a mirage that like might not happen, but little drops of water makes a mighty ocean. Absolutely. The injustice in this country smells like cancer. Mm. You cannot have justice in Nigeria because the foundation of this country, right from 1914 to 2022, is built on injustice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Peter. Let's take some comments. Uh... Okay, so I have a comment. Um, hello, ladies. Norma, I agree with you. We do not truly have, uh, we do not have, um, truly have rich Nigerians. For me to see anyone as, a, as rich in Nigeria, say a true millionaire, he or she must be worth at least equivalent of 2 million euros in, um, sorry, 2 one million, million pounds. 1 million pounds in whatever currency after securing a house or 
of, of his or her own cars for mobility and feeding for at least one month up front this is 534 million million, million naira in official um, in officially today anyone less anyone less than that is just a hopper middle class john <laughs> above all poverty hmm. and i think hmm. it's really true if you think about it to enjoy a balanced cost of living in nigeria more. so some people are asking us some questions i like elsie and Elf, okay Nama. okay yeah. I really just it's just not a question it's just a statement oh, okay. says lazy leaders responsible for lazy youth in our country mm -hmm. okay okay so there's a question from someone they didn't put down your name it says what is the effect of population to resource distribution mm. i mean so, if you want to yeah. have that conversation that's 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 a, a mm -hmm. that's an episode on its own, no, on its own I guess yeah. it's not even an episode it's a season <laughs> you have to make sure there's a one more because i mean because population no. is there. i mean we've always been talking about mm -hmm. population mm -hmm. and um pet control and all but then we also have people who have talked about the um power that our population has which is even the power that the western world has recognized that making them flood into, into this Africa, country, into africa yes. and not, nigeria especially and also investing because remember mm -hmm. the technology i talked about um 80 percent if i'm not mistaken right now of the investors in that sector are basically foreign money so our population is a strong um and what's it called now is a, is a strong part that we can actually play to our own our own good but then again we also need to control it mm -hmm. but that controlling like i said i've said it on this table we know if we control population when the people that are in the national assembly assembly or whatever people that are going to give you the law thrive on the fact that they can have 100 children One yes. or <laughs> even on the age marriage itself. and that's what they believe in, yeah. in terms of their religion and culture and whatnot see uh, this country <laughs> if i might just add a little Quickly, yeah. to what um, elsie said i think one of the ways that we can begin to to see change in this regard as whether nigerians are designed to, for the rich the rich is our mindset and this can start from each and every single one of us we can begin to decide the kind of nigeria we want to see mm -hmm. if you ask every nigeria are you happy with the nigeria that you see today okay. i think majority of people are tired mm -hmm. so what can you do i think part of it is that we need to start changing our minds mm -hmm. when you Absolutely. ask people when you have one-on-one -on -one conversations every day ask people what do you want to see then it, when they answer that question how do you now want to begin to see that it will start from you Absolutely. having a mindset that is different from mm. just making money the wrong way mm. to actually channeling your your talents or your your Thank assets you. or whatever it is what whatever way you can Absolutely. begin to channel it rightly you know Absolutely. but of course this conversation cannot it end cannot in one end. episode <laughs> you know you know interesting thing is that i was supposed to take my son to a school in france do you know that it was after the end of the town that they sent email about the school fees they didn't even discuss school fees at the beginning of the town there are so many things that can be done mm. but you know what thank you ladies i think we had a fantastic conversation now before we go thank you to everyone that called sent in messages keep watching keep sharing it's important that we get the right message out there before we go ensure you follow us on instagram at so your africa uh, with um, then also on Twitter at Wisho Africa One, you can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed today's quote, here it is again: "Rich people are poor people with money." Hi, this one hits deep. <laughs> See you guys live at 8 p.m. tomorrow to so bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>